Call to order the special meeting of the Victoria Planning Commission. If anybody has any cell phones on, please uh, quiet them or them now, please. All right. <clears throat> First order of business. If anybody wishes to address the uh, Planning Commission on an issue or an agenda item that's not on the agenda, or an item not on the agenda, please do so now. And there's no one. Okay. Then we'll get to uh, development reviews and formal action. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, tonight uh, on the special meeting, uh, just on, on your agenda is the uh, Plan 2035. Uh, we'll have a presentation um, followed by a public hearing. Assuming <laughs> that uh, we get some public members uh, to join us tonight. Um, and then we'll be asking for uh, deliberations and uh, hopefully a recommendation uh, about the plan. But um, so you've all had a chance, hopefully, to take a look and review it. Uh, tonight we have uh, Gary Mitchell, who's not, who most of you have, have met uh, a few times over the last, uh, I guess, 14 months or so. Uh, and so he's going to give a presentation to you, and then uh, we'll be ready to take questions and, and whatnot. So um, Gary Mitchell, president of Keating Keys Collaborative, and uh, I'm going to turn the presentation over to him. Thank you, Jared. Good evening, Commissioners. Good evening, Gary. Uh, I will keep this brief just to give everybody a recap once again of some of the highlights uh, of the proposed plan. But um, just to recall that when we started this process, uh, we started with very informal uh, discussions with small groups. We did an early public meeting. Uh, the Victoria Alliance process was starting at that time. We coordinated our public survey efforts and uh, benefited both efforts and then uh, had an advisory committee, which some of you had the chance to serve on and met with that group throughout the, the process. And uh, most recently, our public workshop uh, earlier this mm -hmm. month, and then the series of workshops with the commission and with council. So in a variety of ways, uh, we've uh, heard some common themes. We've heard some unique uh, issues and concerns, hopefully all reflected in the plan. Of course, we're at the public hearing stage now. So once again, the, the report or the comprehensive plan has two parts, the existing city, more about where Victoria is today, uh, facts and figures, maps. Um, that was completed in November, so it is part of the comprehensive plan, but that's more the background part of the plan. Uh, our focus now is on the, the future city portion, and of course, uh, this is everything from how the city develops, the use of land, uh, the growth pattern, uh, ha the implications of that for infrastructure, for traffic, um, but also amenities, parks, um, leisure opportunities for your own residents plus visitors to the city, the economics of Victoria and the area. So those are the topics covered in Future City. And finally, the implementation section, which talks about next steps from this point of just putting a plan together, what happens next, and the different ways of getting down to action. So in each of the plan sections, we've highlighted a series of uh, key issues, considerations uh, on that particular topic. And in many cases, they, they cut across these different sections. They may show up in one, par in one portion of the plan from an economic development perspective, in another area from the infrastructure aspect, for example. And then in each of the sections, there's vision statements, goals, and strategic actions that are recommended. And, uh, oh. How did I get to that slide? Somehow we skipped to the very end. Bear with me. That's one way to have a quick meeting. That's that'll <laughs> brief, make the presentation brief. All right. We went back and just did this little exercise to pick out some of the key words from the plan. The uh, words in in yellow, the verbs. Uh, words that, that talk about things you either want to protect because you like them just the way they are or um, things are good, leave that alone or build on that. In other cases, it's to make something better or to address an issue or problem. Uh, the words in white are those adjectives. Uh, certainly that's what these plans are about is uh, what could the community be like in the future if not that way already. And some of the green, just again, some of the key words. And when I mentioned those early focus groups, these are the kind of words that we've heard the whole way through. So that's what we try to capture in these long-range plans. 
And in each of the sections, finally, there's a series of other actions that came up in our discussions, or in some cases, they do carry over from the, the previous comprehensive plan. So uh, those are captured as well. Uh, you may recall that uh, when we looked at the population numbers and compared to other projections that are available for Victoria, uh, this is that midpoint range that we looked at among the different projections. It would put the city roughly in the, the 85,000 range by 2040. And uh, for perspective, that's taking today's population, a third of it, and adding that to today's city. So that's the implication. There is a, a page spread in the growth section of the plan that talks about the implications of that on the ground, um, where that could occur. And certainly this section and the others talk about, once again, those implications from traffic to parks to housing, all the things we've talked about throughout. So then in each of the sections, a set of strategic action priorities. Um, it, you know, as I mentioned earlier, it, it hopefully would make connections where we're looking at it from a land use perspective, from a traffic perspective, uh, infrastructure, all these different pieces. But again, land use, mobility, growth capacity, infrastructure, economic opportunity. Uh, this is where uh, also I mentioned not just for your own residents, but the tourism aspect, the visitation to Victoria and and. Uh, frankly, attracting outside spending, which is a key to any economy, but also the, this section talks about the regional trade center role of Victoria for this region. Uh, and finally, the recreation and amenity section. So this table is the, the main part that is new since the joint workshop of just a few weeks ago with council and with the commission and with our advisory committee members that attended. Um, this takes what started out as 14 items in that workshop, it became 15 when we are, uh, added the uh, long-term water supply uh, issue to the list. So there's now 15 items highlighted um, in this table, which is in the implementation section. Uh, it, it describes what that action's about, who the, the key players are, um, the potential timing, whether it's an immediate item, the next one to two years, is it several years down the road, or is it five years plus? Um, so that table is really meant to be a one-page basic overview of some of the key items in the plan. So the year one and two items, uh, those of you who did uh, the prioritization exercise with us, we looked at those results, but also with our discussions with staff and just uh, the priorities that we know the, the city needs to address, whether it's infrastructure, again, these different topics. But the, the list on the left are the items that are seen as the ones to tackle first. Um, the ongoing items, uh, there's several items in the table that uh, have been in, in the works. The conference plan reinforces that, maintains it as a priority, but those are seen as things that will continue uh, in the next years ahead. And I also wanted to highlight uh, who is the leader on, on these various items. So I think it works out well that things have been spread around, but have some sympathy for your public works department and parks and recreation staff. They've got several items on the list to deal with. But it does show a good spread. Not, I, I like how this table has turned out in terms of how there's initiatives that really cut across the plan, the different uh, things that we talked about, and then the folks that need to carry those forward. And then there's the year three and four items and five plus. Now, this is a, the day this is adopted, I look at these comprehensive plans as a snapshot in time. Uh, as I emphasize to council, uh, you go through your annual budget process, your other typical procedures every year, you revisit your priorities every year, look where progress is being made, where there's grant opportunities, all those factors that can, uh, frankly, lead to some reordering of priorities over time. So next steps, as Jared said, tonight is uh, for any public comment there may be, but mainly uh, as well your deliberation and whether there's a recommendation of council. And finally, the dates that are ahead for council hearing after this and then potential uh, adoption at the city council stage in early April. So, so I'll leave it at that. I'm here tonight to help along with staff with your discussion and questions. So thank you for the time. Thank you, Gary. Uh, <clears throat> does anybody have any questions of uh, staff? I guess that's where we should head. Questions? staff or for the just about the report in general well I, I was trying to follow the same format we normally do that anybody has any questions of staff Gary uh, I 
got quite a few on different sections, but I mean, I don't know how you want to handle them. Front to back, how are you going to do it? Is this, our, is this our time to ask questions where we have yes, sir. concerns and what have you? Well, I, I, <clears throat> our, my first question on page nine on the future city portion. Strategies to support a quote unquote south side revitalization revitalization focus having seen other communities take that labeling uh, where you're on the south side you're on the we have it bad enough where we have under the hill or what have you do we want to label a section of town as a south side at this just point? a geography it, location people did it in the public hearings yeah yeah that terminology came up from I mean, the that public was hearings. consistent in the hearings. we don't define where south side is that was one of the interesting uh, things in public discussion um, there are some south people that believe Victoria's south side what? is it begins at Sam Houston. Yeah, I, that's not my definition. I would, you know, maybe south of Rio Grande. But there, <laughs> there, there was lots of discussion uh, about where that actually. Is. I just hate to see labeling start for an uh, area of the the community. Would it be with a, a derogatory type connotation to it? You know, where there be, oh, a, the where there be a district that needs some looking at one thing. Say far west. Gary, you have any recommendation yeah, I've, I've seen on that. this? I respect, you know, <clears throat> I respect that observation. I look at it the opposite way. That's trying to focus attention on an area that needs resources, needs focus. So that's the reason to call it out. I understand. I what mean, would you call it? I mean, if you can't. But you got to call it something. You have the to identify end. it. I mean, you have to identify it somewhere. Well, I just, I just, I don't want to see it, like a stigma started where you know if people start referencing with the south side. Oh, that's just the south side. Yeah, you can get a stigma started that way. You know what I'm saying? I'm the You've been in Victoria for a while. You know where under the hill is, and somebody says where you under the hill, that has some connotation to it. I refer, I refer to the Sendero being on the south side of town. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Downtown South Side. Under the so hill's been cleaned yeah. up. It's just a, it's just a geographic. A South Side. Really I'm just, just a comment. Yeah. Like no, I say, it's, it's okay. just oh, my no. comment. No, we appreciate that, please. Uh, am I going to be the only one to have any comments? Or well, no. I mean, I, I have a. I, I don't know if the to, intent is to. I guess perhaps. Maybe I should bring forward. No, What's our intent? Is our intent to change the document at all, or we just clarification? Or correct? Well, I think no, it's we, very we well done. Yes. I love it. It's in draft form, so okay. it can be changed up into the point that council adopts it. Right. So, but yeah. So if you, if there's some major glaring something that that you know y'all don't it, agree it with, well Bruce, now Bruce, is the time to, to let us Bruce, know. Bruce, from my standpoint, yeah, there were only yeah. two issues. And, and Gary's already addressed them. And those were the issues that were brought up uh, when we had our joint meeting with uh, city council. They wanted to see water referenced, and which mm -hmm. you did. There's 15 up there now. And, and Mr. Alvarez wanted more clarification on that table. And I, I thought those, the table looked good. Yeah. So I, I think those two issues, at least from my standpoint, have been addressed. I agree. And, and as far as other items in here, a, a lot of them were just... From my standpoint, when I reviewed it, were just implementation issues, and and nothing to change the format or no, I'm not asking for that. Or anything few, along those few lines. Few items that stood out to and me along the way. And it's intended as a broader scope and just a blueprint, anyhow. Right. It's not a cut and stone type thing. This is the direction we're supposed to be taking. The city, correct? It's a yeah. yeah. Uh, under the, I know it's been addressed, and that was one of the things we got up there was the street conditions. And that we will address it in here. Do we want to make it a little more specific as a direction towards council, future councils? Uh, when we have 0.5% of our roads at the 50 to 0 or 0 to 50 range as poor, as addressing that as a key concern for council and, and actually eliminating that grade for our roads, making that a five-year plan type deal. 
if it's only 0.5%, I know budget-wise, but we want to make that a goal to where the city of Victoria has no streets falling into that very poor category that is complete pavement failure. Did we want to make that well, it is as a, part of the goal? Well, it is a, you know, a 25, 30-year plan. And so, yeah. um, you know, in the implementation table, the, it does address to continue with those street concerns. But um, when you look at, I can't find the implementation. This is where we're but trying you, to set the goals right, for the city. Right. When you look city. at the entire, um, you know, city and all the competing needs, I mean, that's something that in the CIP program each year, streets need to be a priority, and that's what this plan says. But to eliminate substandard streets, you know, in the city, is all, it should always be our goal. Not, not so much substandard. I mean, we, it's one thing to have poor. But when you go to, when you look, I'm looking at the existing. We have half a percent of the city streets are in very poor. Do we want to set a goal for the community to never have them get to that point again, to where you have, according to the definition, complete pavement failure, numerous potholes, pavement heaving, water ponding, bad riding quality? Would that be a goal that we want to work towards? I know we're, uh, we're approaching or we're uh, addressing street conditions and maintenance. But this is where we try and set maybe a more aggressive goal for our leadership, whether it be council, to when we go into budget sessions and what have you, to eliminate having any streets ever fall into that category again. That's been, and we, when we dropped our marbles at the meeting, that was one of the key things with streets. Mm -hmm. you know, we want to make it more, and this is our chance to make it more specific to where we work towards eliminating ever having any streets ever reach that condition because that is that's complete pavement failure at that point it tells me they're not even safe to drive on my understanding of the situation is that's the progress over time that's been made is that that few are even still in that very poor category I think what we're trying to do with the conference plan is and it I think it clearly does is say this is a, a almost number one priority of the city and residents they've spoken but leave it to the annual process of the street inventory and the budget process to allocate those resources because there's other factors like how many people are using a street. Okay. Is it near a school? Or, you know, there's other variables. You said when you, our first meeting, you said you could make the goals as specific or as broad as you want to at that point. Do we want to make a specific goal for the city of Victoria to try and eliminate completely and never have to get in that position again? We got in that position by action or inaction inaction Deferred so it, to fix it there has to be some sort of action this is our plan for action for the next five years ten years twenty years is that something that we can put into your plan <laughs> sure. as, as, as a goal to the goal of our community is to not ever have any of our streets reach that level of deterioration Does that make sense sure it does. mr. chairman I have a question uh, and I, I think mr. woods is bringing up legitimate things that he's concerned about that he's reviewed We've actually, you know, at the last meeting talked about a couple of things. What I'd like to know is what's the process that we go if there's, I'm going to use your example right now, with, with streets and anything else that comes along from any other commissioner. What's the process that we're going to go through is it, is it to, to is it decide to include that? Point. Is it going to be each of us can put out what we would like to see included or changed and then Gary's going to change it or as a commission are we going to have to make recommendations of what needs to be changed or included? This whole thing is a recommendation for the future. Well, no, I, I understand, but like, I guess what I'm getting at is, Mr. Woods brings up a valid point. Do we want to be that specific in the goal? Are we going to uh, instruct Mr. Mitchell to make that change just because Mr. Woods brought it up, or are we going to have to vote on each suggestion as would, a commission and the, and the before reason, it goes forward from there. Well, I, I think that a little bit of that process is up to y'all. I would prefer that that y'all, you know, if that's something that all of y'all or a majority of y'all agree <clears throat> ought to be more specifically stated in there, that y'all could make a motion to include, you know, that and whatever else there may be, then, and then we can go back and make those changes and be able to continue moving the plan forward but with those additional edits or changes if that's what y'all want to do. Well, is it is it fair to say that we, uh, I guess to address Bruce's concern there, is, is it fair to say that we got here because of lack of funding 
So just by you or by the plan being specific doesn't necessarily is going to fix the funding. Right. The funding is still going to be an issue. Funding can be prioritized according to the goals of the city. Uh, and, and I look, the reason, reason why I'm asking these questions, because as the Planning Commission, if you look on page 56, that is our job right there, to do this, to, to question the, this planning, or this, this plan, and ensure that the recommendations forwarded to City Council are reflective of this plan, goals, priorities, and action strategies from the Planning Commission. That is our role that's listed in here, mm -hmm. along with a few other things that we really haven't been doing. Mr. Chairman, can I address the street please, issue? Please, please. The uh, <clears throat> city of currently has a street improvement plan. It's It was developed about three years ago, two to three years ago. We started implementing it last year. We're continuing it this year. Um, it's about a 10-year plan to get all of the streets that are below a certain level of grade uh, or of score um, fixed. I wouldn't put a deadline on that That's uh, because it is totally dependent upon funding. Most of those streets that are in the very poor condition have very poor utilities. We won't have debt capacity to replace those utilities until 20, starting in about 2021. That's when we start having uh, debt capacity available because debt is being retired on a schedule and a bunch of it drops off that year. Starting in 2021, we our plan becomes very aggressive um, and we go, uh, we, significantly increase the amount of money that we're spending in the first year on utility replacements for those worst subdivisions, mm -hmm. the next year the streets. And then with that aggressive plan continues uh, for a significant period of time because that additional debt continues dropping off over those next four, five, six years. So the plan that's in a place now that we've already started implementing is moving in that direction. Right now we're just using the amount of the funding that we have available under the uh, current tax rate uh, and the debt capacity that we have available. And right now it's only, depending on the year, two, three, four, five million dollars a year. Whereas you get to 2021 and you're, you're up into, you know, well over 20 million dollars being available in the first year and going on forward like that. So um, the the plan is there. It's a, it's a solid plan. If you uh, have some time uh, to look at it. Lynn Short can make it available to you. It's very detailed. It lists all those subdivisions that have the terrible streets, and it, mm -hmm. and it breaks them out into which ones have the bad utilities that, unfortunately, you're just going to have to hold off for a little while, and which ones maybe the – and that's the other part of it. If you say we want to just go after the streets that are in the worst condition, um, it, it's not going to work because, in the meantime, you've got streets that are – say in that 65, 70, 75 range, that you can spend less money on today and make them last a lot longer because they have good utilities under them. Um, so you, that's the balancing act that, that our public works department is dealing with on streets. But uh, you know, so far council has been uh, very much on board with that plan and has followed it to a T. Uh, and we continue to, we propose to continue recommending the follow, to them following that plan going forward. So. Uh, I think the goal yeah. is valid, and it's, it's, it's good, and I think the way that the plan addresses it makes it very clear this is one of our highest priorities as a community, and, and obviously public input will tell you it's number one, and I think the plan reflects that. So I just wanted to give you some background on what we're actually doing, you know, kind of behind the scenes that in from, working towards from, implementing from that plan. plan. My, my question was, though, do we want to make that a little more aggressive goal for the coming years for the city? <laughs> because this was one of the number one issues addressed, all the marbles in the jar and what have you. Do we want to make it a little more specific than to just say we're going to work on our street conditions for the plan? Is this where we want to get a little more specific and go, we're going to address these as a little more aggressively? Well, I think it, well, the plan does. If you look on page 19 um, in the mobility section, it does talk about the ongoing funding commitment, which, as we know, is the reason our roads are in a way, you know, in a state they are, is, is it is boiled down to money. And so that is a very specific strategic <laughs> action priority that we should be funding the road improvements. Um, okay. Like I said, it's on page 19 in the mobility section. And so I think it, it does say that. The concern I would have about some, saying, giving a timeline and saying we need to eliminate these types of roads by five years is that's an implementation strategy or, or policy and we don't want to put something 
in the plan that may not be achievable because as John explained, there are a lot of competing demands and it's, you know, it's a, a complex issue that needs to be constantly evaluated. So you need to constantly look at the funding you have available, whether the utilities need to be worked at. And if you just put a, such a blank statement of eliminate all roads in bad conditions within five years, it may not be achievable. Okay. 2025 plan was going to address that. 10 years ago, Red River is the same condition basically it's in today. Yes? Did you agree with that? No, because we've rebuilt the section between. It's yeah, not I'm all rebuilt, not but all we've rebuilt. A portion the has been been redone, and there's a portion of it scheduled to be rebuilt this year. Right, right. But it, that what I'm saying is, so we don't allow streets to get to that level. Right. Is what I'm. Do we want to have it as a part of our plan? Well, and again, on the strategic action priorities, it does um, talk, continue to go into um, asking developers or looking at our street standards and seeing if we need to improve them, looking at the funding of the, the maintenance. And so it's a common theme throughout the plan, um, yeah. but it, it does not, <coughs> I guess, hit you over the head with repair all streets within five years. No, I'm not saying, but to make it more of an aggressive goal, the goal of the community not to ever let our street structure get to that point. Gary, is there any way we could word this differently, perhaps that's make all, it a little that's, more aggressive? That's the only thing I was asking. Do we want to make that, because <laughs> that had been the consensus of the meetings, Bruce, do we I, want to be more aggressive on that? If I, if I may yeah, address please. you, Bruce, um, I hear you, and I'm looking forward to going through your specific mm -hmm. comments. Um, I think what you're looking for is when in some it's cities, implementation well, related is what I envision. In some cities, we work on a next level of plan, a strategic plan that gets mm -hmm. down to the next few years, and that's where you get very specific and timeline. Yeah. Yeah. As you mentioned in the implementation section, one of the priorities in that table of 15 things is the enhanced mm -hmm. capital improvements process. Part of that may be the planning commission having a more direct role in input to that process. That's where you get to specifics because yeah. it's the next five years and it's a rolling five-year plan, the comprehensive plan should set the broader perspective of when we looked at the entire city in 2014, 2015, these are the items that rose to the top and repairing streets continues to be number one. And that's about as far as we take it in this document. Right. And, and I understand that. My, and another thing I would ask staff then to enhance this goal for our new subdivisions coming in. Are there stricter requirements? Do we those 52 coming subdivisions that we talked about in the last meeting, are there going to be right. more stringent requirements on them as far as street quality, what have you? Is that something that can be brought into our, our yeah, I think that flat requirements now to try and eliminate the newer neighborhoods they were getting? Perhaps, right. perhaps as, a, as a commission we can make a recommendation. Right to development, which we have in the past, that perhaps this needs to be changed or, or something along those lines. And, and I think that's the, the vehicle that, that we take to address that particular issue. But uh, at least from my standpoint, our goal tonight was to look at this, mm -hmm. make any recommendations for significant changes, anything we would like to see edited and then uh, once that's completed, make a recommendation to city council. And we have, you know, the newer subdivisions definitely meet much stricter uh, road design standards um, than were in place even 15 years ago. I think they've been updated at least twice. And most recently, okay. most recently, I guess the last two or three years. I was trying to remember when we did, it was recently the council uh, updating them again, the comprehensive plan does talk about needing to go back and look at the ETJ street standards, and that's a negotiation that needs to happen with the county. But the comprehensive plan talks about that already. Right. Which we've, I did see that. Which, yeah. which to support that, we brought that up with regard to some roads in Quail Creek. Right. 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 The, the, so the standards in the ETJ need to be. But without getting into up, the so details of like, we need addressed. to go from an 8 inch to a 10 inch base mm -hmm. or whatever, the, you know, it just generically says we need to go back and look at that because that's an area that we haven't looked at slight complication is we need to go back and negotiate with the county and I, I don't know that that would be all that difficult <coughs> but you know the wind up being some sort of negotiation uh, or as you know, we inherit discussion more through sure because that's the, you know as we annex annexation or, uh, annexation we're, we're while we may be making sure that the streets that are built currently in the city limits are built to 
a 50-year life cycle, that's not the case with the streets being built outside of the city limit boundary today. And we have the ability to, you know, through an interlocal agreement with the county, increase those standards uh, in the ETJ, and that's something that the plan recommends Seems doing. Seems the streets so. have always been a hotbed. It, is it, Mr. Kaminsky? As I understand it, this this uh, plan is reviewed on an annual basis, correct? Sure. And as part of that review process, recommendations are made uh, to city council, I'm assuming. And and as far as, I guess what I'm trying to say, as far as hot areas or changes or something along those lines, that's done during that annual review process, is it, it not? It could be. It could be. But I think one, one thing to keep in mind is that it's not just those 15 items that are on that one page yes, fold out deal that are going to be implemented in those first few years I mean there are other things that are going to be implemented they just weren't the hot topic items of the last two years or of your process that the public was mostly interested in there are going to be many other initiatives that because the plan supports it and an issue comes up We'll use the support as our basis for bringing that initiative forward, and it may not be on that list of 15. And I think that's one possibility. But yes, the, we can we can in, we can increase our street standards in the ETJ. We can increase them in the city again, but we just increased them to a 50-year life uh, design life from 30 uh, about two years ago. And uh, you know, Jared's right. We can adopt, we can amend our subdivision or subdivision ordinance tomorrow to increase the ETJ street standard but if the county decides they don't like it they can cancel our interlocal agreement and then we're stuck so we are bet better off negotiating it working together and coming to some agreement and then initiating it but to address what you were saying about reviewing it periodically I know it says in their planning it's the supposed planning, to be involved in that review process we're to, we were supposed to take the lead I know, on that I know and it's not I said, it's not something that, I don't know if it's in our bylaws or, or not, but I, I know, as you and I have previously discussed, our role as far as a planning commission is somewhat different than what I had heard at these conferences and, and so forth. And I, I think what, what we're being asked to do in this case is somewhat limited as to what may be referenced in, in, in this document. I read that section. I, I read it and I saw it and, and I like, I agreed with your comments you made the other day. But well, and, you know, this document is a guideline. It's a big overview of of where we would like to be and how we would like to do things. Not everything is going to be accomplished like in the 2025 plan. Not everything is going to be done the way that it was recommended in the 2025 plan. I would be hesitant to make any addition to this document or change this document that in any way limits future councils and or commissions. Well, I don't think we have um, that authority at well, all. But right let me finish. Um, mainly because, okay, so we, we raise and we, we put a thing in here that says that, by God, we're going we're gonna to get all these bad roads fixed. Okay, so 20, 2035 rolls around and all the roads are fixed and everything's great and the future council goes, hey, we don't have to worry about roads anymore because we've met the goal that was in the 2035 plan. And uh, I, I think that's unrealistic. I think it's unrealistic for us to try to tell future councils exactly how they're going to do things. I think we have to give them, and I think the purpose of this document is to give them that overview of what the community sees as what they would like to have in the next 20 years. Right. And that the council takes that mm -hmm. and future councils take that and they use that as kind of their overriding roadmap of how of where they're going. And then we have to leave it up to future commissions to hold council accountable and we have to hold future councils accountable for how we get to where that roadmap is pointing us. And, and I do appreciate um, there's a statement in here that that really kind of summarizes everything and brings it in in just a couple of sentences. This is, is continue to fund regular updates to the city street inventory to monitor conditions citywide, prioritize near-term maintenance pro projects, and anticipate long-term needs. I mean, I think that encompasses it all yeah. in any situation. You wish to move and have this brought up as a, a vote to make it a, a change to the plan? I would just 
bring in my input. It's up to the commission what y'all want to do. My, I was just, when I saw that, it kind of just, do we, because from the first meeting, we could make it as specific or as broad as we wanted to. My input was I thought it would be, should be a little more specific guidance for the city in the next 20 years to not let them get to a failure status. Make that a goal. <clears throat> Not let, let, not let, make it our standard. You know, maybe other communities will accept that. As Victoria, not accept that, whatever it takes to do it, to make that more of a goal of our community, to not allow our streets to get to where they are complete failure. I mean, to me, there's I, a, there's perhaps we can the image, the community budget. image wise, even. But there's a, there's a difference between a attainable oh. goal and a lofty goal. Mm -hmm. And that could be one of them lofty goals. This, this is just like a strategic plan for a corporation. <clears throat> so not everything on the strategic plan is going to be accomplished. And not everything that you aspire to accomplish will be accomplished because there are other things that may happen during that 12-month plan that can derail the best of the strategic plans. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's funding. You know, every corporation will have a goal, say, zero turnover. But well, do you know how many corporations actually accomplish that? None. Because you're dealing with the human element, and this is the same thing here. There are other things, and I'm totally with Vic, is that you are locking the future council into something that they may not be able to accomplish, but they have this document that they need to manage. There are other fundings that will come that are available, but then other priorities may come uh, also uh, present but themselves where they have to take care of that. They're not well, locked into it. It's, it's a goal anyhow. that you set. And like you say, you may fall short of it, but it's a goal mm -hmm. that you set for your community that you never let your thoroughfares get into a failure status. That's all. Well, but I think, I think, I think you also have to. Well, as, long as, we don't have a, as long as we don't have a timeline, deadline set on that, you make it your I can see to, that to being you, maybe your long -term additional goal to wording. eliminate completely failed Just to, streets in the city. But I, How hard is that? But I believe that the constituents out there, they want a goal that is attainable not something that is just basically in, on paper to, f to basically make them feel fuzzy-wuzzy good. This, this is about making them realistic as to what, is, what can be accomplished, in my opinion. And, and uh, as John said, that there will be some money available in 2021, but guess what? In 2021, there are other priorities may present themselves that may have to take care of other things other than those failing streets. It, it's very possible. I, I think we're all on the same page with respect to that, and, and I'm just trying to facilitate things here. Is there some wording change that perhaps could be added? Uh, for example, on page 19 under goals, maybe we could add a, a number five that says, uh, as a goal, that no streets uh, reach that. I forgot that rating, the lowest rating or something along those lines. Perhaps we can add that as a goal, a number five. Don't we have to vote on it, though? I think that would be an implied goal anyhow. You're well, I, 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 I agree there. it's an implied goal, but maybe it needs. One of the commissioners has expressed a concern that it's not distinct, distinctly don't represented. A, don't we have to vote on the change? I think our, our, our role, our goal is to just vote on approval of this as a whole. Unless y'all want to address each item one by one. I would just want to get my point across. We don't have to change it. Okay. Council will hear it. They can do what they want to with it. All right. Okay. <laughs> we point, did a very circuitous route to get to some end here. Yeah. Please go ahead. Do you have any other, anybody have any other comments? Please go ahead. I. To be honest, Bruce, I had numerous things here, but my, but my, my comment or my thought was the document is as good as a whole. And, and that the issues I had, the comments I had are all implementation things mm -hmm. that could be addressed specifically to Jared or, or, or the city manager or the council specifically. I mean, I think the plan as a whole is excellent. Mm -hmm. I think it's been through numerous workshops, hearings, comments, um, and I, I mean, I don't feel like we should change it. We should either vote it up or down and recommend it to the city council. Okay. Bruce, please, no, 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 no. We've been down this route before. 
I, I'd like you to say your piece, get your comments out. Yeah. Randy's major issues that you feel. Not, okay. No, that's fine. Oh, no. The, uh, <laughs> we, the only other comment I want to make, and I'll say this, and it's just a blanket comment. We, I still see a lot of references to wanting to preserve historical districts, wanting to preserve historical, the historical values in Victoria. And one of the comments in here, and I, we can, I'm not going to change it, it's just my comment. What uh, page? Wanting to preserve or create historic overlay districts to protect historic resources from encroachment of de in incompatible development. And that I've had a personal issue with, and you and I have talked about it, about the historical values or historical tag that we put on Victoria. And I don't want to see our, our vision of economic development get clouded by trying to preserve historic. Because if you look at what's actually historic about Victoria, not just having an old building, making something old, an old building doesn't mean it's historic. But when I looked at the actual bio for Victoria, what historic thing happened here in Victoria? And we keep trying to make Victoria a historical place when it's really not. We have some old buildings, but looking at what actually historical events took place here, and we look at that for, there's reference in here as far as tourism, trying to promote tourism for historical value. And I, 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 and I have a problem with that. Because when I saw that, that we want to create historic overlay districts to protect historic resources from encroachment of incompatible development, development is the next resource to me for Victoria. That's my opinion, and I know you and I, we differ on that. But I don't want to see limitations put like that. You want to talk about you get specific. That's getting pretty dang specific to where we want to create historic overlay districts that can impede development. I, don't, I have a problem with that. I do. Because I look at what's historical about Victoria, the most historical thing that ever happened was a Comanche raid. Nothing historic ever happened in Victoria, specifically. And I look at four pages of our bio, written by Robert Shook, our esteemed professor here at Victoria College. We have historic roads. You huh? just said it. We have historic roads. Sorry, don't find, the, don't find the humor in it, Omar, sorry. Uh, if I may, and, a couple and, I, and I'm trying to make sure that we don't put ourselves in that box where we, we're creating more historic overlay districts that can de prevent development. A couple of observations from me, and I'll be brief. Um, as I emphasized at the joint workshop, Nothing happens automatically by adopting this plan. It's a, it's, it states it as a priority, but creating a historic district very definitely takes certain actions. Um, the, the issue of economic development relative to preservation, these plans try to capture some diverse opinion that's out there. So there is absolutely a constituency in Victoria that wants to see more historic preservation. Um, as a person who had only passed through Victoria briefly in the past, I had no idea the neighborhoods that are right down the street here. And it, you, you go into a city like this and you see the size of those homes and the age, the period they're from and say, mm -hmm. something big was happening here and there was some wealth here to build those homes. And it's the things that come with historic districts and the federal tax credits and those things that the people who want to do that type of investment, that's the benefit of those districts. So, so I don't see it as either or it's two things that can happen very much at the same time so at the end of the day this plan as somebody mentioned is guidance it's and guidance. Uh, there's a constituency for both of those items economic development and historic preservation uh, normally if to address your, uh, if somebody is coming with an economic development plan they would normally present themselves for variance right and the commission would have an opportunity to evaluate that variance and, and vote it either up or down. And I think we've done that, at least since I've been on, on the commission, and we've done that uh, several times. Just that one comment, I, when I saw that, it just kind of hit me wrong. 
about creating well, these think, historic I think as historic Mr. districts. Out, it's trying... supporting both constituencies. Right. It's supporting those people that that are of the mindset, like has happened in so many midwestern cities, where they just level everything that's old and build new concrete, and the side of the people that want to protect the homes and the buildings that are 100 plus years I old. I just don't want to see it limit development. Well, unless you're going to tear down old Victoria, I don't think you're going to have to worry about it. I don't think that's it. going to be a problem. So, and I don't think you're going to be uh, making the McDonald's on Rio Grande a historic landmark. So <laughs> I, I think both sides of the coin are, are protected. And, and if the statement wasn't in there, I think we'd hear from some folks. So yeah. that's the flip side. I understand. And if you compare this plan to the 2020 or 2025 plan, there's a lot less talk about downtown and historic preservation right. in it. There was that. an entire chapter before. And I think part of that is because we've accomplished so much from those that agree with that it's side of the already. coin. But there's a lot right. that's been done. So, um, but yeah, as, as has been said, there's there was certainly a, um, a constituency um, in the planning process that that wanted us to continue that or preserve what we have. So, I know. Okay, I know I can't change it because it's it's, it's set, it's done. But that was just my comment. I guess y'all ready for me to. Nope, push. I want you to keep going. <laughs> we, we, Bruce, we, I don't. We, I don't disagree with you. <laughs> oh, hey, Mary Ann. Bruce, well, Bruce, Bruce we want you to get your comments one out. One thing I would like the Planning Commission to take note of is page 56. Right. Do y'all agree? In the future city? Yes. With each one of those bullets that directly affect your position on this commission, what our responsibilities are according to this plan. I, that needs to be read and addressed one by one to make sure that we are doing what we say we're doing according to this plan. Well, I think we have to look at what it, it's all to in the future. Is. That's mm -hmm. all in the future. That's what we plan to do in the future, in terms of following yeah. what the recommendations are in this plan. <coughs> well, this is this is in the plan, but I understand well, this. But this is giving us direction. The, the charter, no, it is. The city charter and the, as far as uh, what our role is, not really this. Are you willing to accept this as your plan for the commission that you sit on now? That's my question. I don't know how many how many actually read that. What the five I points did. here? It's five mm -hmm. points. Yeah. Actually, oh, there's fifty-six. Four. The planning commission. There's there's four. Yeah. There's four yeah, well, bullets there. I'm sorry, four. I I think they've all been the education initiative previously described. The public input? Periodically obtaining public input to keep this plan up to date. Is that what you were alluding to earlier? Do we need to have an annual review of this plan by the Planning Commission? That's what we did, we're going to do. We I haven't thought. been doing it. Well, but that's because that's what I'm saying. That's because are, we haven't been charged with doing it before. Exactly, and that's what I'm saying. Are we? When do we plan on start following this this initiative here? That's my question. Is that something do we want to make it to where it is an annual review? Right now, it just says periodically. Do we want this is our goal? Well, as a, I think that's something we this is our, this is our chance as a planning commission. At least this part we can change. Correct. I mean, J Jared, y'all never had has it, during this annual review process, which came. We discussed this the other day. Has planning ever their comments been solicited? We have are involved when the, when the original 2020 plan was adopted. There was a peri there was a review of it a year or two. Uh, in fact, Ms. Scott's in the audience. She was chair of that. There was a re review of it, and then I guess six or seven years later, we did an update to create the 2025 plan. I don't know that we did recall doing annual updates after that. And then we got right. to the point where we've been in this process for, for practically two years, so there wasn't much point in updating something. We already knew the whole plan needed sure. to be updated. So, right. But, yes, we intended to, to as, as a commission, this is what we are agreeing to do in the plan. Is this something that y'all are willing to do? We're, yeah. Is there anything else we want to add to it that we feel we need? To? Ultimately, we serve at the pleasure of council. Yes. So we'll take direction. While we, while we can make recommendations through staff, ultimately we take our direction from what the wishes of council, what the role that they would like us to fulfill. Well, and I'd like to say that y'all are already doing a component. Every time you do a text amendment, you are, you know, evaluating whether that's uh, the plan that we want Victoria to move forward with when you rec make a recommendation to city council. Uh, 
I'd also like to speak to the fact that you haven't, we haven't been doing updates of the current plan because it's obsolete. There's, there's so much stuff that was accomplished and then the things that weren't accomplished needed to be looked at and see if, and, and discussed to see if we needed to move forward with them, which was, as Jared said, the whole point of doing this new plan. So when your plan is first adopted, those periodic reviews are quicker than whenever you're in year 30 of your plan, then hopefully you've accomplished almost everything in your plan and you're not needing to review it as often. Well, I can say, you know, having served on Parks mm -hmm. Commission for a long time, that we did because review the 2020 and the 2025 plan because so much of what was in those two plans were ongoing, actively being pursued and related directly to what, what Parks was doing. I think as we go forward, so much of this new plan uh, has more to do with what planning would be involved with. I'm glad to hear that staff is at the point where they're, uh, I think it's even at some point maybe even wanting us to be more involved as the 2035 plan gets to the point where it's starting to be implemented and, and some of those goals are, are being worked towards. And I look forward to that. I think, I think that's an important role for, our, for the commission. So yes, I would support all four of those points. And then we have to basically hold our own feet to the fire mm -hmm. and development to make sure that we do accomplish this. And the staff speak. Mm -hmm. And the staff speak to the fire. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> because I don't want to have it in here for not going to actively do it. Well, you know, our plan is to do it. Um, if, that, if that's what you're looking for in terms of an answer right. from us, we wouldn't have put it, <laughs> we helped write and create this plan, so we wouldn't have put that in there. But every good plan needs to be reviewed and, uh, you know, periodically, whether it's annually or, or whatnot. Uh, annual, uh, um, Okay. That's a good point. I'm glad you brought it up because it is a change to what has been going on. It's a, it's a definite change on how we've done things in the past. I mean, from the two years I've been on this commission, if it hadn't been a driveway or a billboard, that's, we didn't worry about it other than a few plats here and there. But that's been pretty much our biggest issues that we've dealt with. Well, <laughs> and, you know, th that's, that's the nature of planning commission. We don't have control over what's going to come your way in terms of, of development yeah. review. But since you brought up billboards, if you go back and look at the yeah, staff report, we there refer to the conference of plan yeah. when we're making recommendations yeah. on those. Um, so. Yeah, so, but you're right. The last the last several years there has not been an, a, you know, a, a, a review of the existing plan because. In our mind, we've we've been planning to do this update for a while, and and you know, I this thought it was. I, I guess I misunderstood. I thought it was. Miss Garrett alluded to the plan was being reviewed annually. She said she directed staff to review it, and I don't know if the actual work product is is a report from staff as to where we stand. I, think I was my. What? I think the departments in the city reviewed it. I don't know that it came yeah. down to the specific right. commission. It didn't come down to no, right. I know it didn't come yeah. down to us, but I, I know, I know we haven't been involved. But I, I assume the city was looking at this uh, on an we ongoing were, basis. Were, there are different levels. For example, during our capital improvement um, planning process, if we are going to request, um, you know. A, a new building, we would have to justify it um, partly through the comprehensive plan. So during a lot of our just day-to-day -day activities, we refer back to, as Jared pointed out, they're in staff reports um, to the Planning Commission and to Council. So we we do um, use it a lot more than what's probably visible to the Commission or even maybe City Council. Okay. No, I understand the, what you're saying about billboards. I saw that comment in there as well. The, the reducing the visual clutter yeah, of billboards and obsolete signage along gateways and corridors. My question on that, is that going to include abandoned, uh, the visual clutter of abandoned buildings and property? I think that's always ongoing since, since it's always I'm just saying it's unsafe buildings. Mm -hmm. yeah. Abandoned buildings is a different process and a different board from Planning Commission. There's another commission gotcha. the city has that addresses this. Uh, so that's not a Planning Commission. The, the, the quoted comment of visual clutter. Is that you know. a comment or a dig? Uh, <laughs> I, it, it, it looked like more of a dig when it's, quote, when it's a quote visual clutter of billboards. Yeah, I saw it as a, as a dig towards the billboard business. Yes. Sorry, I did. No. That's like my deal is what about the visual clutter of people that abandon property that along our corridor? That's because they're addressing that on the corridors coming in. What about people that abandon property or have dilapidated property, abandoned buildings? that's also visual clutter 
but we're not addressing it in there quite so harshly. I just saw a dig in there that was kind of, hmm, maybe it should have been there, maybe it shouldn't have. But I can't change it. It's a draft. We're done. You have any other comments, Bruce? <laughs> no, I'm done. I just want to make sure we're comfortable with the I, what we're I, going to be held ourselves accountable for in the next years to come and make sure that everybody had taken a chance to really read what our priorities or what our uh, expectations of this commission is going to be. Yeah. Good point. I think it's a good point, yes. All right, then. Uh, anybody else have any other comments on the plan? I make a motion to adopt the plan as it presented. Or do we have to have a public hearing? Oh, I, I'm ended. sorry. Yes, yes. We have to have a, uh, okay. We just open up. Uh, we'll open it up now to a public hearing on the plan. Does anybody wish to address the commission? Everybody here. All right, great. So no public hearing. Now we can receive a motion to approve the plan. Okay. Uh, we have a. A motion by Mr. Rashid and a second by, by Ms. Wyatt. Uh, all those in favor of approving the plan as drafted, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Plan's approved. And I guess it will be referred to City Council on the 15th, I thought it was? Yes, sir. There will be a public hearing, the first public hearing at City Council on March 15th. It's a public hearing only. It will be a similar presentation at that meeting. And then it will be on their agenda for act for action um, on April 5th. And, and let me ask you this, Jared. Let's say when it's presented to them, they want some changes. Does that come back to us for review? Or, is or if during public hearing you have citizens that are here that want to see a change in it or have a major concern with it, how do they address the council at that time for a possible... Well, that's what the public the hearing is for, just to, okay. I, I, I wouldn't well, imagine. I was assuming we that's what this was as well, but sure. that pretty much got. <laughs> no, there's. <laughs> this, yeah, it did. With, yeah, it did. Sure, there'll be a public hearing and be an opportunity for, and so, you know, council's direction says we want to add da-da-da-da to the plan, and we'll add the da-da-da-da to it. Um, it's not something that would be deferred. More than back likely, down. probably wouldn't be referred okay. back unless there was something specific that they felt something like the planning commission changed. should go I back see. and review. Oh, I'm hoping fine. we're far enough along in the draft yeah. that it that we don't have something like that. Sure. But if there is, then sure, it'll be up to the council to to give us that direction to send it back. They certainly have sent things back to you before. <laughs> we've had, with this meeting now, we've had what five opportunities for the public to be involved. Probably a little more than that, but yeah, at least. Probably at least the Planning Commission specifically has been involved. Any other comments? Anything between the commissioners? When everything's finally put together, can we get a copy of it, please? A hard copy? Yes. Once we don't have to print our own. Thing. No, we'll have yeah, a we'll have a nice a this nice bound copy color. for you whenever. I'll print mine in color. Right, thank you. It'll be in color. I don't know you could read the maps, and the maps the way you print them, if you're trying to print them eight and a half by eleven, they're meant to be eleven by seventeen and folded. So you'll get a you'll get a nice. But if a, but if a citizen wanted to go to our website and print it to read it, I would advise the them maps to, to read it on work. their computer where they can zoom in and out on the. And I appreciate screen. the large margins for notes. All right. Do, the font. <laughs> all right. No uh, items between commissioners. Do I have a motion for adjournment? We move. Move. All right. Okay. Vic was first. Vic move made a motion. Mr. Spears second. Okay. We're we're all adjourned. Right. All all those favor. All right. No, I didn't. President John. I didn't. Bruce, Bruce, our intent was never to cut you off. I, I, I just. Well, I would like to.